There were days we were just, we'd be in the office, we'd have nothing to do. You know, the phones weren't ringing. Rocky desperately needed customers, so he decided to drum them up himself. How about you? Good. Here's the latest catalog. He visited cigar shops across the country, persuading retailers to stock up with Indian tobacco cigars. I think I was like something like 600 cities in 700 days, and it was just nonstop, relentless. I would spend all day, you know, possibly the evening, and I'd go around during the day, then I'd go in the evening, spend time at another shop, and then eventually build a relationship after a few cocktails where we end up at their house where I'm cooking dinner. Slowly the orders began to build, but the momentum never lasted. There are times where people say, you know what, they sell when you're here, but when you're gone. The problem Rocky came to realize was fundamental, the product. They weren't good. They weren't that good. They absolutely weren't that good. The poor quality masked an even deeper flaw. The problem was that we were letting other people make the cigars for us. We'd smoke a particular cigar, you'd assume you'd get that cigar when it was delivered to you because other people were making it for you, and sure enough, you'd get them, and I'd literally want to cry. I'd sit in my home when we had the little humidor, and I can't believe I just spent $150,000 on the shipment. What am I gonna do with it? How am I gonna sell it? We physically didn't have enough cash in the bank, so Rocky and I could even cash our paychecks. You're like strung out and you're wondering, where am I going to get money to get the next batch of cigars and how am I going to collect the money and how am I... There were times we thought about closing up shop. But he didn't. In 1999, Rocky packed up and headed to the tobacco plantations of Honduras and Nicaragua. I want to touch every leaf of tobacco. I want to taste every leaf of tobacco. I want to try every blend. His plan was to get control of the production of those cigars and create the quality product that could turn his company around. I wasn't Latin, I wasn't Cuban. This is a business that's handed down through generations. So I was the outsider. I mean, my parents thought I was an outsider. When you come from India, where we don't have cigars, we have BDs and things like that, you know. I said, how the hell are you gonna make cigars? Everybody thought I was nuts. But when they told me I couldn't make it, that's what drove me. I mean, that- When every, they told you you couldn't do when it? When they said I couldn't make it, that's what lit the fire under me and said, you know what, I'm gonna show them otherwise.